Hey guys and welcome back to Minecraft! We're playing on my server and I'm here at the hippie camp at the UFO landing zone overwatched by the giant mech in the background there and I've got to be honest with you guys I feel a little bit of visual dissonance with what's going on with this sort of hedgerow bush style thing that's going on here. I, I don't like the fact that the bush is just sat on the floor. I feel like we need to do something about that. And the something that I'm going to do about that involves these spruce trees. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware that when you slap down a uh, two by two um, number of spruce saplings, you get a... Uh, a nice tall tree, but more importantly, you get this stuff on the floor. This is Podzo. I like to get Podzo. It's pretty tasty, but I've got a little bit of a problem with this. And uh, I hope you're going to come on a little adventure with cause and effect for me here because my shovel does not have mending on it. Now, that's not too much of a problem. Uh, I don't think that emeralds are too... Not emeralds, sorry. Diamonds are too hard to come across. But mending, much easier. I like to fix things with XP rather than with uh, diamonds if I can. So uh, I'm going to go off to forest because... I was watching Mr. Lion play the other day, and she was off getting mending books over there, and I noticed that he had a new type of villager that he doesn't normally have. We're at Forest Little Floating Village here, and we're going to jump over here because, as I say, I noticed yesterday that there was a new villager here where Mr. Lion was having a poke around, and this is the guy. Oh, yeah, get, take, take my rotten flesh. Mm-mm, give me those emeralds back. Beautiful, beautiful. Two rotten flesh left over. Not a big worries, though. Somewhere, hopefully, there's an ender chest here. I'm going to grab me a book out and go walking around looking for a guy with a certain name tag on. Here's our boy. How you doing, buddy? I would like to... Yes, good, okay. He's going to sell me a mending book for 18. Oh, I'm one short. But I'm uh, kind of happy about that because I, uh, I managed to punch him in the face the other day. And funnily enough, he, he wasn't too happy about that. So uh, I'm glad to see the price has reset back to normal. I'm not sure if this is going to be adventure achieved or not, but we're going to walk around for a little bit looking for a guy that puts an emerald out. Uh, that tells us that he wants to do the trades with us. Uh, there's two more emeralds. That is exactly what we need. Well, we only needed one, but that's good enough to leave me one in the chest afterwards. There's my man. Thanks very much, mending book. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Is there an anvil here? Is this at... Oh, cat. Is there actually an... Is this actually an adventure done, or do I need to do some more? It looks like I need to do some more. Where, where, where's an anvil at? Got a feeling one used to sit here, and it's broken, and no one replaced it. That, that's a shame. That's a shame. All right, let's uh, run out. It's so definitely something that I should be keeping in my ender chest. I've got a little box of tools in there, so that's... Well, not a toolbox, a workstation box. I do have a toolbox, but that's totally different. Just come to the realisation that I don't actually have a great deal of experience on my XP bar there, but we will find out. Here we go, this is what I'm after. Honey paddle, yeah, three, good. This is it's because I've put no work on this. It's all been XP so far, so there we go. That's beautiful, beautiful. Well, it's not even been XP because we didn't have it on there. It's just fresh as it was. Never before have I needed all this podzole, and now I'm like, yeah, let's get the podzole done. A little bit, but not too much neighbor trouble here. I've gone around and I've put down what I think is an appropriate amount of pods up. Really? Are you, are you really? No, no, it must have been him dying. Uh, I've not gone all the way down the back. I didn't think it needed it. In fact, the visual balance, I think, is pretty good here. Uh, now that we've got everything down, I, I, I'm actually really pleased with it. It's just, it's a small detail, but it does a lot of work. And we are back at the Guardian Farm. Okay, it's time to go and have a look at some of the things we have done here. I know we have seen an awful lot of this recently, guys. But trust me, we are closing in on the final straights. We have done so much uh, so much uh, glass smelting over here. I was trying to say sand smelting. I was like, that's not how it works. But we've, we have actually technically been smelting sand as well. To make all of this glass, just look at it all. There is so much in there. I don't even have an estimate for how much was actually there. Uh, several, several thousand, maybe into tens of thousands. I'm not entirely certain, but it was a lot. You might also notice that we have two different funnels here. Well, that's because we made this bot on one big shout out to everyone that held out with this, but it turns out I had got things wrong. If we go over towards the middle here, there's a big black shape in the middle here. Uh, I've got a little access way down on the side. Yeah, we could just about make it out here. Let's go to all the way down. You can see that down here we are limited on height. There's a couple of glass blocks here, but that's because that is the height where you get the like top bit of bedrock. And of course, that's what we need to take into account when we are dealing with something of uh, this size. There are bits of dirt here because I did some counting on the way up. I didn't put the sign back. So as I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself, I did some counting. It turns out that this drop here, which was the second funnel, was like 20 blocks. Enough to kill a player, 
Not enough to kill a guardian. Hi, I'm falling down here. Uh, but the next one up... Oh, no. The next height up there... 28. That's still not 30. But I am kind of counting on the fact that the guardians are going to drop down here. They're going to bounce around. That's going to be good. But we've put these signs here because I reckon we can use these dispensers and this lava bucket to make some sort of weird AFK system. So my plan here is to have four doors leading out. I've seen this on some public server somewhere and I can't remember exactly where it was. But we're going to have little doorways up like this. Maybe big doorways. We'll put some pistons in to seal it off. And then as uh, guardians fall down... Maybe we want to do it on this level. They'll take 28 points of damage. That'll leave them on one heart, and then you can kind of leave the door open and hope that their random bouncing and stuff will bring them towards. Maybe we'll have some pressure plates here, and the doors will be there. They can open up, let people through. We might need a little bit extra space for that. But, you know, I'm working it all out. There's going to be that on each side, uh, and so we'll have lava at top. When there's nobody stood on any of the pressure plates, the lava flows. When there are people stood on the pressure plates, the lava should go away and let the guardians fall down and take a little bit of damage. But we need to do a test first. Yes, indeed. We need to find out exactly how much uh, damage a guardian will take upon making this drop. And there's only really one way to do that. So we're not completely done. I reckon we're about halfway done. We've got these tiny slithers down the end here that still need capping, but I like the way that all the eyeballs are looking around at a central point over here. I'm going to continue on with that theme, but we have a problem already. It was a problem that we really should have been able to predict. The funnel seems to be flowing okay i do sometimes spot a couple getting stuck up here i say stuck they're really not there for that long but there does seem to be a bit of a dead stone dead zone wow words dead zone that i had not anticipated but that's okay it's working fine i've put a new uh, elevator way in here it's not going to be the final way i want to kind of open up a whole load of space and make it all light and airy and big and open but down here we've got the killing chamber not its final form it's too big it's far too big like at this rate the nothing's going to come spilling out of the out of the hatchways if we open it up but we do have a problem over here. If we come down and have a look, these are overflowing. Literally, as fast as I can empty them, they are filling up. And as I said, we're only about halfway through. But I think the answer to this is to use water. We've got a little bit of a trough down here, so we can send these straight into a downwards facing dispenser maybe a couple we might need to move them pretty quick you never know uh and then we'll put them into some water here uh and then maybe we'll go this way i like the fact that there's a gap there this is not so great i was kind of hoping that we could go down into the floor somewhere like this okay we could put down a soul sand block there we could have water moving around it's not the best setup how about over this way also not the best setup if we could have a hole in the floor after a small run up so that they can self align. If we have it in a, a weird sort of zigzaggy pattern like this, we've got no way of um, putting a sign down in front of the bubble column because uh, that's that's kind of important uh, on this last bit to stop a uh, backflow of, of of backflow. So I brought a couple of shulker boxes full of stuff down with me, of course, after remembering that I needed to go back up and get them out of the uh, ender chest. So I'm hoping that we can make some... Oh, wow, well, I filled this with rubbish when I need to go transport some stuff around. Wow, wow, I need to open that out. But hopefully we should be able to make some sort of wonderful sorting system back here with easy chest access on the front. That'd be useful, wouldn't it? I don't think it matters who you are. A lava death just hurts. It really does. I mean, like, physically the player, not physically the character, you know? Me, me, the person wiggling the mouse. Oh, it really hurts. I was doing a little bit of a refactoring around here, and I've done building some glass all the way up to the top. But you can see there are signs holding back lava up there. And, of course, I pulled off the uh, the signs whilst ripping the wall down up there. But I'm a professional Minecraft player, so I just pushed this button, and, of course, it went along and turned off all the lava that we've got going. Going out here i pillowed out a little bit and turned around and put these signs back in place but when i was done one of these guys came flying past me and literally his hitbox must have nudged me off the side i fell down into the lava oh such a shame thankfully the lava had only spread across half and when i went and checked the end of the sorting mechanism my sword and my pick were down in the corner over there but unfortunately that was it that was the only things that were there and waiting for well i suppose this 
raw cod was there as well because i haven't haven't allowed for raw cod why why would i allow for raw cod up there this is a temporary sorting system it for one it's too close look at that really really close but two i i don't know exactly what we're going to be doing with all this i keep changing the shape of the area and stuff like that did i turn on the lava when i left yeah some of them are burning up there so let's try and take care of the rest shall we this gets a little hot at times uh, not a little hot a little uh, painful at times because of course thorns but hey 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 no one said you're allowed out of here uh but we've got to deal with them the ones that didn't burn man i said about that thorns right well i mean i may have lost the life but we took care of the problem that we wanted to take care of so that's all good next thing i need to do is kind of open this all up i need to put some pistons there i think we can have a pull a system either that or some doors i mean i, I definitely feel like we're only really going to have two two uh, killing areas because really who who's going to come down here and group some more than two in fact there's only ever really two people on at any one time so i think that'll be fine that that's a bit of a lie normally it's like three or four of us but uh during the day like this yeah only two oh, i also want to point out this little crazy contraption down here there's a sticky piston underneath that observer there anytime the hoppers dump anything into the dispenser there uh, the comparator picks up the fact that there's something in there, pushing the sticky piston up, which makes this one of these, uh, uh what's that, what are they called? Observer clocks. You can see they're both looking at each other. If we see the back here, when it pushes up, any, any time now would be great. You can see it is pulsing at quite a rate, and that kicks out all the items really fast. If you guys are not aware of this circuit, man, it's just so useful. It's experimentation time. I've been uh, doing a few tests down here. As you can see, I've knocked up this horrendous little device here. It's all just testing concepts out. And believe me, I know this like wall-to-wall -wall prismarine is not a good look. But up here, I've been making some uh, poison, po uh, some damage potions. Sorry. Do you know, these aren't quite as easy to make as you would expect. You need to go through either healing or through poison, as I've got lots of spider eyes, to make your, uh, to then put a corrupted uh, fermented spider eye to corrupt the potion into into the damage it yeah it was a, a a lot more steps than i had originally anticipated now i'm going to kind of travel my way all the way up to the top it well not all the way up to the top to my little control room here i'm going to press that to turn the lava off now this drop doesn't quite kill guardians it's one of the great sadnesses of the water monument uh is that the lowest region that can spawn guardians it is just a little bit too low to be able to kill them before bedrock. But we might be able to use that to our advantage here. If I open this up and I come around back this way and open this up, we should start to get a steady flow of guardians falling down. Oh, look, some of them actually just die. Uh, but should be able to fall down, move their way into here, beautiful, and start collecting in this killing chamber. You can see I've got a little hole for XP here. I am on and an iring with putting a dispenser in the background to be able to, like, flood all the items forwards but as you can see here there's an awful lot of bedrock down there and it makes it quite awkward but as i say right now we are just experimenting with forms and function i don't think i'm gonna be able to make this shot guys honestly i i don't think this is gonna work but the problem i've got at the moment is if i walk up and just hit them i get the forms effect you know the thing we died of earlier uh nice nice xp there though uh, and i want to try and throw this through this this is just so not gonna work all right here we go <gasps> I did it. I did it. Didn't kill quite as many as I was hoping for, but uh, it kind of worked. Kind of worked. I really should have got some sort of numbers, because uh, now I've got to try and do it again, and uh, that's not so guaranteed. It got me as well, but it also got them. That's pretty good. Let's... Uh... There we go. Cool. Sunrise is coming through. Uh, so, yeah, I suppose that works. It's a pretty expensive way of doing it, uh, but I don't think it'd take as much damage as I do uh, just trying to hit them because that that got very expensive like this. I mean, look at look how much damage I'm actually taking. And the, the whole key here is to not eat through all my food. That's, that's kind of the idea. So, uh, next steps. I need to uh, pretty this up a little bit. Try and figure out if there's a way of... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about getting extreme removing some bedrock, but that... That's going to be a lot of work. It might happen if over this side we have a more horrific setup. I also need to kind of orientate this in this direction because, of course, we're going to have uh, another version of that over here. Uh, and this this just kind of gets in the way. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! So all the caps are done. Over 500 squid inks went into this dark prism in here. We definitely, 
definitely need to get ourselves a squid farm. But I've got another job to do, and I thought, yo, oh, no. Right, right next to all this water as well. That that's that's even more painful. Anyway, okay, so <laughs> as I was saying, I've got a little job to do here. We need to tidy up some sides, and I thought you guys might like to see this all get ripped down. Oh yeah, I put a few. I put sorry, a torch down the bottom, so it should be beautiful. Just to watch it all pile on down there and disappear. I love that. By far the quickest way to get rid of any part. I wish. All this other space down here was as quick as that to get rid of. I missed the bit that I was going for. I also don't have a bucket because I've put it in other things now. Talking of other things, look at what I have been doing here. Now, it would be unfair to say that I did this all on my own. Mr. Lion came along, did a lot of digging. Mad Frank came along and did a lot of blasting with me. It's very dark under here during the day. Let me uh, let me get down and under and we can have a look at what's actually going down. Okay, I've gone for some different shaders. Normally I use Continuum. These are Silders, Vibrance. I really like the vibrance and inside shaders put the, the water out there I, I dislike it i dislike it greatly anyway i want to show you this i mean we've got three people online at the moment so we're getting about three people's worth of gardens and that makes this thing over here amazing now again this is uh a bit of a bit of janky redstone here. I'd say janky redstone is probably the nicest it's going to be. We've got a tripwire. We come standing here. You can see that the door opens. And if I use my stand-in dummy here, uh, it, it, I always like to put it down there. Um, you can see the doors open. And if we have a look up there, the lava should slowly start to flow away. Now you might be thinking, great, you can do that just by hooking up an observer to the tripwire, right? Yeah, you would if you didn't want to be able to do it on the other side here as well. So what I've had to do. Uh, the door mechanism is very much independent from each other. You can see that we've got a line of redstone that just goes up and it just goes into there. There is a repeater there just to make sure that the signal strength continues through in a great and wondrous way. But all in all, it is just a line of redstone. Uh, I, I really love this sort of uh, half slab to bring a line up here. What we've got here are two edge detectors. This is a rising edge detector and this is a falling edge detector. For those of you that don't know what they do, this... Sends out a pulse when this signal turns on, and this one sends out a pulse when the signal turns off. So this is constant at the moment. You can see on the other side, uh, all the lines are... I'm going to call them dead. When this turns on, little block goes through that one, fires up uh, a T flip-flop over there, and when it turns down, turns off, sorry, this one fires the other side of the T flip-flop. So that when we do another set over here, if uh, someone's already standing and then someone over here st uh, stands on it... Oh. Is that going to work? It might not actually be as sweet as I think it is, but it's supposed to be a uh, correction system, a, a, a holding a state memory. That's it. It's supposed to be a state memory that don't interfere with each other. I think I need to do an extra step here. Maybe they both need to go into the same... into these? Yeah, maybe. Any anyway, anyway, let's not get sidetracked here. Uh, this turns the lava on and off, which means all this needs to move. Uh, I need to move all this all the way down here. Uh, and make great wonders. But I think with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you guys next time where we're, we're going to go and do some other things. I think maybe it is time that we went and got uh, some sort of spaceport on the go. I think that's probably a nice, smart option. Where's, where's my XP? Oh, 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 oh. Look how much you get off of that. When three people are online. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, but yeah, I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!